Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be another one week, one palette video and I did start this series last month and I'm trying to do one of these each month. So last month I did do the Urban Decay Born to Run palette so I will have that video linked if you guys want to see my one week, one palette for that palette. But this week's palette is going to be the ColourPop and Kathleen Lights So Jaded palette and this packaging is just beautiful, first of all. I really, really love, you can tell how much thought they put into the packaging. And even on the inside, it is beautiful as well. And this is a really, really pretty color story. And obviously there's so much variety in this palette, which I really, really love. You can pretty much get any type of look that you want out of this. And let's just go ahead and get into the five looks that I created with this palette this week. And then afterwards, I will talk a little bit more about my overall thoughts on the palette. So the first look I did was a green halo eye and I really, really wanted to play with greens this day. So I decided to dip into some of these more green grungy tones over here. So I used this light mustardy greenish tone called geodude in the transition and one thing i really really love about this palette are the transition shades in here i feel like you have any type of transition you want you have a more peachy one and then a more purpley cooler toned transition and then you also have this more mustardy greenish toned transition so i feel like you have all the transitions you need and i like that there are some lighter shades in here perfect for my light skin tone but there are also a lot of deeper tones in here so you can really add that depth especially if you have a deeper skin tone so that's something that i really really love about this palette and that i realized over this week i did get this palette I think at the beginning of December, so I haven't had it for that long and this week was actually my first time sort of playing with it and actually putting it on my eyes, but I really, really loved every single look I created with it. For this green halo eye, I also went in with this shade Jade just to deepen up the outer and inner corner and then to deepen it even more, I used this pretty deep, more grungy tone called Stoned and that just deepened out the outer and inner her corner a lot more and then I use the shade tiger eye on the center of the lid which is sort of a mid-tone green color and it's a little bit on the darker side so I wanted to add some brightness so I actually put the shade period or is it period per no I put the shade peridot on the center of the lid just to add a little bit more brightness that's almost like a lime green tone but I feel like it worked really well over the tiger eye shade and I did actually also use the shade Emerald, which is really just this metallic emerald green shade underneath of Peridot. So I put Tiger Eye sort of all over the lid and then Emerald a little bit more in the center and then Peridot even more focused in the center of the lid. So sorry if that's kind of confusing. I hope I'm explaining this well, but also let me know if you guys want me to go into this much depth for each look because I'm not really sure if this is actually helpful to tell you exactly which shade I used and where I used it, or if you just wanna know generally what I did for the look. And I also used the shade Diamond, which is just a really pretty glittery lid topper, which you guys know is one of my favorite kinds of shades. I really love those lid topper type shades. So I used Diamond actually on quite a few of these looks just to tap over the lid to give a little bit of glitter. And then I also used the shade Pearl for my highlight shade on my inner corner and brow bone for every single one of these looks. So I won't be repeating that through explaining all of these, but I did use the shade Pearl just every time as my highlight shade. I find that's the perfect highlight shade. It's not too warm or too cool. I find that's the perfect neutral to go with every look. So I really, really love that Kathleen included that shade in this palette as well. Now, look number two was a purple, more mauve toned smoky eye. And I feel like I could have made this look a lot darker and a bit more intense, but I just made it sort of a little bit more natural, obviously using some of these more purpley cooler tones. So the transition shade I went in with is Rose Quartz and that just put down a really beautiful base in my crease. Next, I went in with this more purpley tone called Ametrine, and this is one of those matte shades with glitter in them, which I don't really like those kinds of shades, 
but I figured I'd just kind of use them as a matte and kind of just ignore the glitter in it, which I don't really like because sometimes you can get a little bit of glitter fallout when I use it sort of just as a matte shade, but I did pack this all over my lid basically to create that really smoky look. And then on the outer corner, I went in with the shade Alexandrite, which is just a pretty deep purple shade and I really love the way that looked on the outer corner. It just gave a little bit more dimension. Next on the inner portion of the lid, I went in with the shade Fluorite just to brighten up the inner corner a little bit, obviously using pretty much all of the purpley cooler tones in this palette. And again, I went in with the shade Diamond just as a little lid topper to give a little bit of glitter to the look. And that is it for that little purple smoky eye and I really love the way this turned out. I figured I found that this was a little bit more of a natural look, but you could also deepen it up and make it a little bit more intense as well. The next look was a definitely an out of my comfort zone type of look. It was a blue sort of glittery eye and I don't think I've ever worn blue on my eyes before. So I was definitely a little bit scared to do this look because I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out but I actually kind of ended up really loving it so I started out with the shade rose quartz in the crease as a transition and then I just went straight in with turquoise and I just went for it and put this pretty much all over the outer portion of the lid sort of in the outer crease but I was kind of scared to take it up a little bit far so you'll notice that the blue is sort of lower on my lid and not really blended into my crease a lot because I have never really worked with blues before and I didn't want to make it look like a whole black eye so I didn't blend it up too much because I didn't want to get crazy and out of hand but I also next went in with the shade sapphire and kind of deepened it up a little bit again not blending it up into my crease too much because I was just scared to make it look like a whole black eye but even though I didn't blend it into my crease I actually still really loved the way this look turned out and it was a little bit of a different technique because usually I'm used to blending colors pretty much all the way up into my crease but with the blue I just wanted to keep it a little bit lower and then on the inner portion of my lid I went in the shade with I went in with the shade aquamarine which is just this really pretty beautiful light blue shade and I really really love the way this looked on the inner portion of the lid and I feel like it really pulled the look together and then because I just wanted to go for it I actually used this glitter shade called opal and this is a pressed glitter I know a lot of people don't like pressed glitters and I don't mind them they're technically not eye safe but I just make sure not to get them in my eye and I actually really really love glitter so I like that you have sort of that glitter option to really take your look up a step and make it more full glam. So I did use a little bit of opal just right in the center of the lid. And then again, playing with blue tones sometimes is kind of tricky and scary. So I did go in with the shade My Precious, which is basically the shade of my skin tone, if not a little bit lighter. And I used that just to sort of buff out the edges and make sure it was really well blended and there were no harsh lines or anything. And then I went in with a little mixture of the shade Sapphire and Stone just to make it a little bit deeper and cooler toned and I use that on my lower lash line so even though this look was definitely way out of my comfort zone I really liked the way it turned out and I found that the blues in this palette were actually decently okay to work with obviously I just sort of patted it on my outer corner and didn't blend them out too much but I found that I didn't really have any problems blending them out and making them look seamless so I did actually really love this look which was surprising because I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out the next look is a little or I guess you could say a big burgundy wing that I ended up doing and this again was another look that was sort of out of my comfort zone and just different for me so I went in again with the transition shade rose quartz I think that's probably my favorite transition shade in this palette and I didn't really know what I was going to do this day I knew I wanted to use this burgundy shade called garnet but I thought I was going to do a halo eye and then it just sort of turned into this really intense bold wing so I did create the wing with this shade Garnet and then I went in with a little bit of Jasper which is just a little bit deeper and it almost has some shimmer and a little bit of shift to it and I just used that really focused on the lash line just to add a little bit more depth and I also added that to my bottom lash line as well. 
And then I actually ended up going in on the lid with the shade Smoky Quartz, which is a really, really beautiful, more cool toned metallic shade. And I actually really loved the way this looked on my lid. And this look ended up turning a lot turning out a lot better than I thought it was going to. And I actually really did love the way this look turned out. So I was pretty surprised by it. And then the last look that I did with this palette is actually what I have on my eyes today. It's just a really pretty warm peachy look. And I did want to go a little bit more natural since a lot of the looks I did with this were a little bit more out of my comfort zone. So I started off with the shade Royal Jewels, which is a little bit more of a peachy toned transition shade. And then I went into the outer corner increase with the shade you're a gem which really just deepened it up a little bit and added a little bit more of that peachy tone and then I went in the shade carnelian and I used that sort of on my lash line and to deepen out the outer corner a little bit and that actually made it turn out a little bit more red rather than peachy but I that's okay I like the way it turned out anyways and I really wanted to go in with this sunstone shade on the lid so that is what is on my lid and then again I went in with a little bit of diamond as a lid topper because I just couldn't help myself and then lastly, like I did with all the other looks as well, I went in with the shade Pearl on my inner corner and for my brown bone. And again, this is just a really easy, more simple everyday look, but I really like the way this look turned out along with all the other looks as well. So overall, I really, really did love using this palette this week. And I think the variety in here is incredible and Honestly, this is surprising to say, but I feel like I'd be okay with this being the only eyeshadow palette in my collection Just because I feel like there is so much variety with this palette and you can get pretty much any kind of look that you want with this So I feel like I will never get bored of this and even with all of those looks I created all completely different sort of color stories I still didn't use every shade in here I really wanted to do a look with this beautiful mustard yellow shade called citrine But I just didn't get to and I also wanted to use again this glitter this other pressed glitter the shade topaz I didn't get to use and there are a few other shades in here I also didn't get to use so I definitely could make so many different types of looks out of this and I still have more shades in here that I need to play with even after using it this week so I really really love this palette and overall if you're looking for a palette to add to your collection maybe you don't have many eyeshadow palettes at all and you just want a palette that will add so much versatility and where you can really get a, a bunch of different looks out like an insane amount of looks out of this I would highly highly recommend this and obviously it's Colourpop it's a bit more on the cheaper side and I like that you get so many shades in here but it's not really a gigantic palette like the James Charles palette for example is freaking huge but this you get so many shades and it's actually a pretty small palette for what it is which I really really like because it's really small and compact and you're never really going to go through these eyeshadows anyway so I feel like it's not necessary for eyeshadows to be huge and I just think Colourpop and Kathleen did such a good job with this palette. Again the packaging is stunning, the inside is stunning and on the back you also have all of the shade names which I really love. They didn't just make the back of it blank, they actually used the whole palette and made the whole thing look really beautiful. So. I really love everything about this palette. I don't really have any negative things to say about it. I mean, if you don't like pressed glitter, I can see why maybe you'd be hesitant to purchase it, but even there's only two pressed glitters in here. So with all the other shades, even if I took the two pressed glitters out of here, I would still purchase this. Basically what I'm trying to say is I would still purchase this even if I wasn't going to use the two pressed glitters in here because all the other shades are just so stunning and beautiful. And I find that the metallic shades are pretty pigmented. I mostly always apply metallic shades with my finger. So that did work pretty well on my lid. You could also use a wet brush to make them pretty intense. But I also used the shade Smoky Quartz, not even with a wet brush. I just used a dry brush and it turned out really opaque 
and intense on my lid so i did really really love that i didn't even need a wet brush to apply the metallic shades in here so again overall i just really really love this palette and i hope you enjoyed this video and let me know down below in the comments if you would like me to continue this little series and what palettes you would like to see next and if you did enjoy this video make sure to give it a thumbs up i do post new videos about three times a week so if you want to see more from me make sure to subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notified every time i post thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time